Marvin Anderson enjoys working as a volunteer firefighter in Hanover County, Virginia, a dream job of his since age 10. It's a dream that almost never came true. On July 17, 1982, a report came in that a black man had raped and brutally beaten a white woman. Police immediately named Anderson a suspect. They asked me, you know, do you know anything about a rape that had taken place over the weekend? And my response was nothing other than what I heard people in the community talking about. Anderson had no criminal record. Police obtained a photo ID from his job. They showed the victim that color photo, along with six other black and white mugshots. She pointed out Anderson from both the photo spread and a lineup. The officers stepped into the room and everybody else that was in the lineup was escorted out. When he came back in, you know, I looked at him I said, she, picked, she identified me. He said, yes, and I started crying. During the trial, the victim maintained Anderson sexually assaulted, beat her, and left her for dead. Meanwhile, people in the community told police that another man, John Otis Lincoln, was responsible, and a bicycle that had been used during the attack was identified by the owner, who said Lincoln had stolen it about 30 minutes before the attack. Yet Anderson was found guilty and sentenced to 210 years in prison. The entire room went dark. I couldn't see anyone. In 1988, six years after Anderson went to prison, Lincoln confessed to the crime, but the original judge in the case refused to vacate Anderson's sentence. Anderson reached out to anyone he thought could help prove his innocence. In 1994, the Innocence Project took his case. The nonprofit legal group works to clear people wrongfully convicted. Attorney Vanessa Potkin says the system mishandled Anderson's case on several levels. We are very troubled by the lineup and um, the suggestive identification procedure that led to um, her eyewitness identification in the case. And then aside from that, there was this very troubling evidence um, pointing to another person as the actual perpetrator in the crime. According to the Innocence Project, eyewitness misidentification, false confessions, and government misconduct are the leading causes of wrongful convictions. DNA evidence made the difference in Anderson's case. They got a profile that they were able to run in the um, state convicted offender database. And lo and behold, it turned out that um, the DNA was consistent with Otis Lincoln, who by then had was in the database. Since 1989, DNA technology has helped to exonerate more than 300 people in 37 states, a reason why some in the faith community have reconsidered their position on the death penalty. Last year, the National Association of Evangelicals reversed its longstanding support of the death penalty. The development of DNA evidence has provided new ways for us to probe the guilt or innocence of those who are convicted or who are accused of crimes. Speaking to Congress last year, Pope Francis called on the U.S. to abolish the death penalty. The group conservatives concerned about the death penalty agreed, saying in a statement, the death penalty does not make society safer, and it can inflict additional harm on murder victims' families by prolonging the legal process. In light of these concerns and recent wrongful convictions and botched executions, more states should heed the Pope's call to end the death penalty. Potkin says DNA evidence helped free 18 innocent people facing execution. She questions their fate had that technology not been accessible in their cases. Basically, 4% of people sentenced to death are actually innocent. So have all of those errors been corrected? I think, you know, it would be erroneous for us to think so. You know, the one thing that DNA testing has shown us is that, you know, we have to have humility in this criminal justice system. We don't always get it right. Marvin Anderson spent 15 years in prison and four years on parole. In 2002, he was fully exonerated and eventually received compensation from the state of Virginia. Today, he serves as chief of the Hanover Fire Department. He says spending most of his adult life in prison for a crime he didn't commit was painful, but that he's not bitter. He credits God for both the breakthrough in his case and the second chance at fulfilling his life's passion. I talked to God and asked him to just take over my life, do what he wants to do with it. I've tried and I didn't succeed. 
So I'm putting my faith in you. And I think I'm doing pretty well today. Charlene Aaron, CBN News, Hanover County, Virginia.